Let's go back to Ephesians 5. Okay, you can let go of John 17, trust me, okay? But keep your hand at Ephesians 5. So if we live by that at verse 26, the word of God through our own work, through our own uh, cleansing, then look at this at verse 27. Notice this matches with Revelation 19 about fine linen, okay? About fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints, okay? So look at this, okay, notice, okay, remember Revelation 19 mentioned that it's fine linen, clean and white, it's the righteousness of saints, right? Mm -hmm. this, is, this fine linen is based on our works, correct? Do we understand that so far? Okay. Look how the fine linen depends upon your work, which is dependent on how you live according to this, okay? Ephesians 5, 27, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having what? Spot or what? Okay, you know what that's talking about. That's clothes right there. See that? Oh, that Bible will blow up your mind every time. That's why every... We defend every word of God as perfect and pure. Amen. We have to defend that. If you don't, then it, you take away doctrine. Yeah. You take away an important truth that you need to know yourself as a relation, to have a good relationship as a wife with the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Uh, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. See that? So not spot uh, or wrinkle. Or blemish. That matches with Revelation 19 over there. You see that? It's fine linen, clean and white. Okay, we understand that now so that we can get good clothes. Uh, if you recall Revelation 2, uh, I'll read it very briefly. You don't have to turn there. But if you recall Revelation 2, actually, we'll have to turn there. So go to Revelation 2. We'll have to turn there because that way you can better understand. Revelation chapter 2. Now remember, Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, uh, we noticed over here that's a double application, right? So hyper-dispensationalists, they'll try to think this is only tribulation saints. But when you do that, you're taking away an important truth that Christians need to know here. So Revelation 2 and 3 is talking to seven what? Churches. So it's going to be pretty obvious that the church... The Christian church, they're going to have some form of application in here. So, Revelation 2, you see that? Church, 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 church. Works, works, works. Did you see that? Okay, now look at Revelation 3. You see church, church, church. Works, 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 right? Now look at Revelation 3. And then we'll read verse 18. Verse 18. Look at this. To the church of Laodicea which spiritually applies to who? Us, right? Okay, so you want to know this because you're going to be verse 18, which you don't want to be. I counsel thee to buy of me two things. Notice it says what? Gold tried in the fire, right? Okay, so then in other words, you have like treasures here. It's kind of like gold, silver, precious stone, something like that, right? Okay, so then we got gold that's tried in the fire. So fire, it actually can purify the gold. Something's going to be tossed in the fire so that it can become more pure. And then the second one is what? Right there, close. Did you see that? Keep reading, 18. That thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. See that? Wait, is it true that through our works... We're going to have gold and clothes. Look at 1 Corinthians 2. You can let go of Revelation 2 and 3. You can let go of Revelation 2 and 3. But go to 1 Corinthians 2. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Man, this is cool, Pastor. Scripture with Scripture, adding pieces of the puzzle Amen. to see the, the truth of God's Word. That's called dispensationalism. Yeah. Dispensationalism is rightly dividing verses. And when you divide the verses and then you add the pieces together, then it becomes incredibly enlightening. That method, uh, the different method that we add in addition is also called scripture with scripture. Scripture with scripture to see greater truth. All right, so 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 
Uh, just if you read through that briefly, it's talking about the Holy Spirit in us, so then we also live by the Spirit. Thus, by doing that, look at chapter 3. Chapter 3. <coughs> chapter 3 and verse 12. Chapter 3, verse 12. Now, if any man, what does it say? Build upon this foundation. See, there's something, you're preparing yourself, you're doing yourself. Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Look at that, you see that? That matches with Revelation 2. Depends on your work, really. Yeah, look at verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest. Told you so. See that? Will it be, okay, so then if, you mentioned over here gold tried in the fire. So will our work be tried in the fire then if it's going to produce gold? Yeah. You, look at, keep reading. For the day shall declare it. Notice he says the day. See, Paul is thinking about some special day. There's a day coming. Yeah. Because it shall be revealed, your work is going to be revealed by what? Fire. And the fire shall what? Try every man's work of what sort it is. See that? So it's going to test your work. Now, Revelation 19 and 1 Corinthians 2, combined with all the verses we looked at, should prove eternal security. Once saved, always saved. No matter how bad your work is, your sin is, you're not going to burn in hell. Right. Oh, I don't believe that. Well, you don't believe that? The reason why God is trying our righteousness, our work, is so that the bad works can be burned off where the fire does not even touch us, but just burns our bad works. So then it burns our bad works, thus we have clean garments, and we made ourselves ready for the wedding. Baloney, you made that up. Well, keep reading. Verse 14, if any man's work abide, see if it lasts in the fire, and gold can do that, right? Abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a what? Reward. Okay, but what if my works are not good? I've got bad works all my life. So, uh, and, uh, am I not going to burn in hell? No, look at verse 15. If any man's work, not the man, work shall be what? Burned. He shall suffer what? Loss. But what? He himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Did you see that over there? See, you're saved no matter what. No matter what sin you commit in the future, you're saved no matter what. Why? Because your salvation is based upon the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's Christ's work and Christ's righteousness. So because this is based off of His blood and His righteousness, that's not what the judgment seat of Christ is going to judge you on. All right? God's like, oh, I know that you're saved. You're going to heaven. So don't worry about that. That's not the work that I'm judging. The, the work that I'm judging is actually your work. And when I judge your work, because you already have the finished work of Jesus Christ, you'll still go to heaven no matter what. That's why I see you as sinless. But then based on your work, I'm going to have to burn all that off. There you go. So again, don't confuse your work, your fellowship, your Christian walk, with salvation, with Christ's work, and Christ's righteousness. And what you have to be very careful is that there, there is wrong doctrine called lordship salvation, yeah. which teaches that if you're truly saved by faith in Christ's work, then Christ's work should be manifested out of your life. Why that's not true? You looked at 1 Corinthians 3 over there. 1 Corinthians 3, there are people whose work fail, but they are still saved. If we're truly saved by Christ's work, that means 100% uh, His work, not ours. His work, not ours. We have to truly rely on Him, not anything we do. If we're living a wicked life when we're saved by the Lord Jesus Christ, and then we say, because I live wickedly, I'm going to burn in hell, why, whose work are you looking at then? Whose actions are you judging and looking at? Christ's work or your own work? Your own work. I thought the Bible says, not by works of righteousness which we have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us. Well, that means you're condoning wicked Christians living wicked lives. No, we got the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah. Romans 14 calls it that. All right, so what is this judgment called? Look at Romans 14. Look at Romans 14. 
This judgment is called the judgment seat of Christ. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, 2 Corinthians 5, and Romans chapter 14. 2 Corinthians 5 and Romans chapter 14. Of course, the Bible is a boring book, you know. We can't, we can't learn anything out of this. And then that's why they have to mingle fleshly entertainment within devotionals and Bible studies. You play two-hour Halo. I, used, I, I remember that about a couple of years ago. They'll have a two-hour Halo and then just a 15-minute devotional. Hey, man, when you do that, that Word of God is not speaking to you. It's not alive. The world becomes more alive to you. And no wonder you can't separate yourself from the world. All right, look at Romans chapter 14. Romans 14. We memorize this, right? Uh, look at verse 10. But why dost thou, verse 10, but why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at, ought, at not thy brother? See, brothers, Christians say, brethren, do we go to the judgment or do we escape judgment? People assume we escape the judgment because we're already saved, so we're not going to burn in hell. But you got to realize this. There's a separate judgment for us. For we shall all stand before the what? Judgment seat of Christ. That is different from the final judgment of Revelation 20. You notice we're at Revelation 19. Revelation 20 is a final judgment. This is the judgment seat of Christ. Go to 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5. You all should memorize this verse. 2 Corinthians 5. Verse 10, verse 10. For we must all appear before the what? Judgment seat of Christ. Now look at this. Look at this. This, this is good or bad works. All right? Look at this. Um, remember Ecclesiastes 12? Uh, for God shall bring uh, every work, every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or evil. See, so there's good or bad work, right? Now, will the judgment seat of Christ judge your work? Look at this, your good and bad works. That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done. See, according to what you did, not in your soul, but what you did in your body. Soul secured, saved, sinless. But your body, God sure will judge what you do in your body. According, uh, keep reading verse 10, according to that he hath done, whether what? It be good or bad. Oh, man, that book is amazing. Amen. It's alive. Amen. 